As the Nintendo Switch heads into its 8th year, I thought it'd be pretty cool to give a 2024 update on the best Nintendo Switch single player games. As new people pick up the system and gamers look into the back catalog of titles to play heading into the rest of 2024. So I've got 15 of the best ranked titles here. My ranking for the best single player games games now before we get into that what's good everyone oj here welcome back to another video please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first but i'm starting off with an asterisk with shin megami tensei 5 vengeance that game is not out yet and i know that if it was already out it'd probably be in my top 15 but smt5 vanilla i'm gonna leave it out for now and give you guys an update later when it's all said and done with nintendo switch single player games now let's go ahead and jump into it here at number 15 and that is Bayonetta 3. This is a game that, yes, there are some frame rate issues with the title, but the input response and the controls itself are really smooth and good. It's got a lot of great content. The graphics are pretty good overall. Some spots look a little bit rough, but for the most part, when it comes to a third person action adventure game, you're not going to see many games that are as impressive as Bayonetta 3 with the Demon Slave mechanic, which I think is the star of the show because Bayonetta, for the first time ever, can actually in real time control her massive demons that she summons and she can string together combos with those big huge demons in addition to fighting herself it's a huge change up to the combat in the Bayonetta franchise and I found it to be exhilarating overall there's some really innovative boss battles and mechanics in there each time that you fight a boss it feels like it's its own spectacle of great gameplay and ideas and things that they probably scrapped a while ago but they decided to put into it now i do think that the music is great and the weapons are also a big star of the show there are so many different variations of bayonetta's classic weapons that you can get once you do certain things and new ideas as well that just flow and make the combat stringing together combos and doing things in the game just feel fantastic to pull off so not a perfect game by any means but bayonetta 3 to me combines so many things that i love about gaming when it comes to pure gameplay fun variety replay value all included on the cartridge no need for any extra dlc season passes or anything like that everything's right there you have great modes afterwards heck you even have the teaser for bayonetta origins which ended up being its own game you have that game kind of put inside as a bonus as well you've got extra modes to play bayonetta 3 is the complete package once you get over a few issues here and there and it's good enough to make it to number 15 on my list number 14 unicorn overlord and man this game might be higher if i had way more time to play it but i honestly feel it's already one of the top games i've been able over the past few weeks or so i've been able to put way more time into unicorn overlord especially the past number of days and this game is phenomenal it's got a great artistic style you guys all know vanillaware and if you don't you need to know who these people are because their style what they do with the hand-drawn graphics and animations is second to none it really looks great it has fantastic music and it's got a really innovative tactics battle system that just really flows once you start playing it and you start picking your characters and you start picking what you want to do and customizing your different units that you have and how you want to attack enemies leveling up going through I found myself enamored with this game, putting in so much more time, and I haven't even done everything. But that's how impressive Unicorn Overlord is as a tactics game. It really shines in so many different areas. And I think that the biggest thing with this is the content in the game and the story and how it wraps everything. So Unicorn Overlord, absolutely one of the best games on the Nintendo Switch, and I still need to play it more. Heck, when I do my update, it could be higher on this list. Number 13, Fire Emblem Engage 
I love this game. I put over 100 hours into Fire Emblem Engage, and the things that I love about this game, one, it's the best looking Fire Emblem game made of all time, and I understand that Fire Emblem games have not had the best track record for graphics, but it still looks sharp if you're playing it on the Nintendo Switch OLED, or if you're playing it on your TV. The content in the game is vast. There's a lot of different things to do. There's good replay value as well. But the biggest thing here is the quality of life features combined with the combat and the animations and the depth. You combine all of those things, the core nucleus of what makes a great Fire Emblem combat and gameplay. Fire Emblem Engage has it all. The heads up display, how you pick your weapons, when you can activate your engage rings as well and your ultra attacks that you have. Fire Emblem Engage is just a fantastic game that it does take a little bit of time to kind of really mesh and get into if you're not a big Fire Emblem fan and some of the quirky story elements with the game but it all comes together and once you really start to learn how to play the game it feels fantastic to go through and it's very smooth runs good as well fire emblem engage is just a tactics game that i can still go back and play at any point boot up another file and play it it's got a punishing difficulty as well for those who want to try themselves it's got the classic fire emblem if your unit is taken out they're done for the rest of the game so you really have to be cautious on how you play but they also understand that hey we're gonna let you rewind the time and all of that even on the harder difficulties so i really enjoyed fire emblem engage and i feel it's one of the best tactics games that i've ever played and easily one of the best nintendo switch single player experiences number 12 persona 5 royal and honestly this would probably be higher as a single player experience if i didn't already experience it multiple times on other platforms because by the time that i got to the switch version of the game i had already played persona 5 vanilla persona 5 royal on the ps4 persona 5 royal again on the switch and ps5 i got them both at the same time so i'd already played it a number of times but that does not take away on how awesome this game is persona 5 royal is a phenomenal game with tons of content with great graphics great music great gameplay and the slickness of this i don't think that there's another title screen and menu screens and sound effects and all of that that are as good as persona 5 royal it really hits every single note that you want it to hit the story comes together beautifully it's very good and intriguing the gameplay elements are nice and it's something that you just kind of have to get used to when it comes to the social links but once you understand how the social links work and kind of what to do it's actually pretty fun to go through now i'm not the biggest social link person at least in terms of how they do it here and that's why persona 5 royal is a little bit lower than some of the other games here but i still feel that it's a fantastic game that really the social links help out with the gameplay in terms of what you can do how your characters progress and you still have all of the great things that make smt great as well with the demon fusion and putting those together with your personas you have that in this game you have your team you've got great voice acting persona 5 royal is the full package for a jrpg on the nintendo switch for a single player experience and you get all of that great royal content with extra female character as well and everything that she can do in the game and her segments and just the updates to the quality of life with the game in mementos that right there is a game changer for persona 5 so persona 5 royal easily makes the number 12 on the list as one of the best single player experiences on the platform. Next up at number 11, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Torna the Golden Country. That is the DLC for the base of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They're fantastic games. And honestly, I wanted to have it higher, but when I was looking at it objectively, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is fantastic. But remember, when I played the game, I played it the first time through right there at launch as they were patching the game every number of weeks or months and everything so a lot of the really good quality of life things that are in the game not at this point i didn't necessarily experience in my playthrough of 200 plus hours in the game it's a better game than what it was at launch but i went through it with some of those issues and when you start compiling all of those yes i love it personally it might be higher in terms of what they did with the story and everything 
everything, but some of the gameplay elements hold it back a little bit. And that's what happens when you're making a list like this. You're kind of splitting hairs here when it comes to some of the things like the blades and the gotcha type of mechanics, not with money, but the fact that it's a gotcha. Okay, you might get a rare blade, you might not. But when you get past all of that that I just said, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 plus Torn of the Golden Country is one of the most pristine, finest RPGs on the platform. It's got a great in-depth combat system that yes, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. Yes, there's the auto attacking, but when you understand how to move, how to work, what to do, bursting the orbs, getting through your chain attacks and all that, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 turns into a behemoth of a fun game and Torna just adds to the depth of that, especially with the story. And that's where Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Torna and just Xenoblade Chronicles in general outshines to me pretty much every single game on this list because the story is impeccable. It's so good with Torna and what happened with Adam and the characters and the updated battle system. And if it wasn't for the community and they're forcing you to do everything in some of the boring missions with that, this game might have been a bit higher. There was just some rough areas, but overall as an experience, I love it. And I think that if you give it a chance and play it through, you'll see so many good things about the game in terms of what it does with its combat and the music and the graphics and the gameplay. It's super fun. Just some issues here and there, but still good enough to make it to number 11 on my list. Next up at number 10, Metroid Dread, a phenomenal, pretty much near perfect single player Metroid experience. The only thing that I can complain about is the game is not too long and the music isn't great. Outside of that, Metroid Dread is perfect. The controls are perfect. The graphics are pretty much perfect. Could have been maybe 1080p, but it's 900p docked, whatever. It still looks really good. The animations are super top tier. You would think that, man, these people, Mercury Steam, they've been making Metroidvania games for forever. Well, no, that was only their second Metroidvania game that they made on Nintendo hardware. They did an incredible job with the look of Samus, with the gameplay, and goodness gracious, the story itself is phenomenal. The ending is still in my brain as one of the best endings of all time, and I am thrilled to see where they go next with Samus and the Metroid arc. Metroid Dread does everything you want for a good Metroid game. The speed running is in there. The extra modes are there. They add it in there for free. The difficulty is there. Metroid Dread is phenomenal. And I always go back and kind of play it because it's my comfort food at this point. Sometimes when I'm not feeling some of the newer or bigger releases, you can just pop in Metroid Dread and play it and just feel right at home as somebody who grew up back in the day with Metroid on the NES and on the Super Nintendo, Metroid Dread controls, looks, plays better than all of them, and it had to make it right here in at number 10 on the list. Next up at number 9, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. I have to put Xenoblade Chronicles here, even though it's a Wii game. I tried to make sure that I didn't put games that were on like older, decades old platforms and all of that when it comes down to it, because I want it to be about the Nintendo Switch. But Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition adds enough stuff to make it way better than the original release. It looks better, it runs better, it has added in extra content, and it's something to where people can finally play it on a modern system anywhere that they want without having to worry about having two separate versions of the game on official Nintendo hardware with Xenoblade Chronicles the 3D on the new Nintendo 3DS and then Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii or backwards compatible on the Wii U using Wii Motes or using a classic controller plugged into your Wii remote. I mean, it's just a hassle to play it beforehand, but now on the Nintendo Switch, it's updated, it looks better, runs better, everything is good with this game and if you play it on the Switch, it truly provides a way better experience and that's the reason why I have it in at number nine here on the list. It is still story wise, gameplay, still just as good, if not better, than pretty much most of the modern games released today. The combat is still super unique. You don't see a lot of games that can play like this and have the hook. I think that Zimbabwe Chronicles Definitive Edition has one of the best hooks in terms of gimmicks and combat with the see the visions in the future and all of that and how it ties into not only the gameplay but also the story and the overall I would say vibe of the game it fits every single 
aspect of it and when you add in all the different side quests and bosses and monsters and content Zelda Chronicles Definitive Edition is a no-brainer to be within the top 10 and one of the best hands down Nintendo Switch single player experiences that you can play next up at number eight Super Mario Odyssey this is pretty much the perfect 3d platformer if you're looking at it from a controls and gameplay and modern aesthetic super mario odyssey looks better than a lot of games that are on other platforms that try to do the 3d platformer thing it looks better than a lot of them on hardware that's nowhere near as strong this game runs at 60 frames per second, runs at 900p, so the performance is there. You're not feeling like, oh my gosh, man, my inputs are dropping or it's laggy when I'm playing through this game. And that is so important. The reason why I'm bringing it up here, it's so important for a platformer, but a huge 3D platformer on the Nintendo Switch. There's nothing else kind of like it here that's this good. And when I talked about the modern aesthetics, the modern controls, the hat throwing, the cappy mechanic, the possessing different enemies, how that all ties into the different levels, there are some faults with all the different power moons and kind of some of the repetitiveness with some of them. But if you're talking about just the base core experience and the great levels that are put into there, the main ones for you to play, not all of the extra content, Super Mario Odyssey is one heck of a 3D platformer that still to me hasn't really been matched on the Nintendo Switch and graphics wise it looks incredible it's still one of the best if not the best looking arguably the best looking game on the platform so Super Mario Odyssey was a spectacle when it released the music the jump up superstar all of that was just super hype for the game so it's hard not to have it not within the top 10 it's easily one of the best rated games although in my heart that's how I'm kind of judging these games how I felt about them when I played it and Super Mario Odyssey was just bliss going all the way through I still need to go through and collect all of the power moons and I want to do more streaming with the game and all that because it's awesome but yeah Super Mario Odyssey right in there at number eight cannot wait what they have next for us with the next big Mario game. Next up at number seven, Bayonetta 2. Still the pure best action game. Stylish action, hands down to me, is Bayonetta 2. More people need to play this game. Sold over a million on the Nintendo Switch, which is really good. I love the fact that it sold over a million, but more people need to play it. And the reason why, well, one, you've got a bunch of awesome nintendo cameos and levels and characters in there so if you're into nintendo obviously you might want to check that stuff out but the real reason here is because it has the goods and the goods are the controls the gameplay the level design and the story is solid it's not my favorite story out there but it's pretty good for an action game like this and there's plenty to do in this game you've got all sorts of fantastic combos and weapons and strings that you can do you're going to start feeling a natural once you get into bayonetta the dodge offsetting extra things for depth in there bayonetta 2 still to this point plays better than most of the action games that i play on other platforms that might feel a little bit stiff or the dodge rolling isn't as good and this game is from 2014 it's a decade old going on a decade old at this point and it still plays better than many of the games that come out in today's day that are action games action adventure bayonetta 2 is just that good and it looks good as well even though it's just 720p about 60 frames there's some dips but the input delay is pretty much near non-existent when you press a button it comes out so it doesn't feel laggy at all it doesn't feel like there's any issues even if there is a dip or two when it comes to the frame rate it just feels super smooth i don't know how they do it but they get it done every time so bayonetta 2 to me is still the best pure action game on the platform and it's absolutely a must play for you guys to go out there so stop waiting and sleeping on bayonetta 2. next up at number six super mario bros wonder and i was wondering if i should even include this game on the list because it does have a pretty big emphasis on multiplayer content like it's all there you can play multiplayer you can do races you can have the local multiplayer four players and all of that but 
here's the reason why that i have it on here the multiplayer in this game is almost like ghost data multiplayer i mean don't get me wrong it's not you don't bump into each other you can play through the whole game single player and get the same experience it's not like you need certain characters in order to get to certain places like super mario 3d world for example so that's the reason why i have it in here it's still to me best played and best enjoyed as a single player experience and then if you want to mess around with your friends in the game races and all that you can do that but play it single player the first time so you don't have to worry about the camera and all of that either now getting to the actual game itself it's superb the only real criticism that i have is that the bosses are kind of lame when it comes down to it but a lot of mario bosses are lame so it's not really that big of a deal to me but the gameplay the controls the levels the wonder seeds are just a joy i just was smiling the whole time i was playing this game it was just incredible to go through and play super mario bros wonder is one of those games that you just have to experience the trippiness of the levels the wonder seeds the excitement the speed the controls everything that factors into the game just flows so perfect so super mario bros wonder makes it the number six on my list okay guys i have to put in another asterisk here but this is definitely somewhere on the list super mario rpg absolutely one of the best single player experiences on the nintendo switch system i forgot to add it in here but i'm going to add it in now it's my list super mario rpg is really cool it's an easy rpg that's not breathtaking in any type of area and maybe that's the reason why it wasn't at least initially on my 15 list here but i have to have it here because pure fun wise as an rpg i almost beat the game in my first city because that's how well it flowed i love the combo meters that you have to do the chain attacks i love the characters the writing all of it is still relevant and very good still to this day that's how you know that the game is goaded because it's a game from 1996 or whatever on the super nintendo that i played like crazy back in the day but they made enough changes they did did enough things in here for me to say wow that felt like a different experience despite it being the same game and i loved the updated graphics there was some ui stuff that they did as well that's much better there was some quality of life changes that was better as well they added triple team attacks and there's a few other added things that make the game special as well while retaining all of the charm of the original so super mario rpg absolutely has to make it in here as an honorary in the list but i didn't put it originally but you guys know what i'm saying okay back to the list here guys number five fire emblem three houses man this gets really tough as we get higher and higher on the list but fire emblem three houses checks all of the boxes for a phenomenal single player experience it has great content in the game it has fantastic replay value so you're getting bang for your buck it's got great setup and story i think that's really what makes me say okay this is a quintessential single player experience on the platform is that the story is so good and what sides you pick you can feel disgusted you can feel happy you can feel upset there are a range of emotions that i went through and it's almost like it's two games packed into one the pre-war and the during war era and i loved what they did with the character designs i love the combat in the game and it even has a little bit of persona in there with the calendar system which is not necessarily new or exclusive to persona games the newer ones but i think that it was integrated very well because it's not split into okay day and night it's split into to activity points so you can earn more activity points and do more things in the day so to me i like that way more than being restricted to like one or a couple different things that you can do in a day then you have to move on to the next thing and you have to kind of balance when i want to go into mementos or when i want to go into this or that it's just kind of like eh. i don't feel like dealing with all that fire Emblem three houses gives you a little bit of that management but then also gives you more flexibility with it as well so i love that about the game and the ending pissed me off when i played through with uh, the black eagles campaign and edelgar but then i played it again with the blue lions and i felt a bit better and then i played it again with the golden deer and i felt okay but overall i think that that's what is the making of a great single player experience that it does give you those wide range of emotions when it comes to the story and everything fire emblem three houses also has one of the most god tier soundtracks of all time seriously this soundtrack i still use it in my videos i still have it playing through my live streams 
Fire Emblem Three Houses somehow did not win Soundtrack of the Year at the Game Awards and in other places because they're crazy. But yes, the soundtrack adds to the flavor, to the volume, to what Fire Emblem Three Houses is all about. So Fire Emblem Three Houses, it's got all of the stuff that makes for a great tactics game when it comes to the gameplay and the depth and the strategy and absolutely deserves its number five spot on the list. Number four astral chain and honestly it goes back and forth between all of these here with these games astral chain has been as high as maybe number two on some of my lists now it's in at number four but astral chain is the complete package and just like bayonetta 2 i need more people to check out this game why should you play this game why should you buy it because platinum games did a phenomenal job with the game play it's all about the gameplay in this game you've got these different legions that you use that are essentially your party members that you can swap in and out at pretty much any time you can level them up they can learn new abilities you can equip them with different things and yourself you level up with your weapons and what you can do and you can do tag team combos with your legions unchain them bring out another one to where you have two of them on the screen at the same time with yourself doing combos you have different things that you can build upon that there are so many cool things with astral chain in the game and just like beta 2 just like beta 3 it's content and feature complete you get a complete story you get a complete game with no extra season passes or dlcs or anything like that and the controls and the content are all there and easily one of the best looking games on the platform with phenomenal music as well because the music in the game is just so good so i absolutely have to recommend astral chain the story can be a little bit cliche and you can kind of see things coming from a mile away but as you play through the game you don't care because of how great the flow of the game is the different type of gameplay styles you have the investigation as you're going through and kind of checking out crime scenes and seeing the data and seeing the replays of things and trying to figure things out but then you also have the action gameplay as well and even some open-ended areas where you can do side quests and other things too so it really just ticks all of the boxes boxes for a phenomenal single player experience and even after you beat the game there is more to do so they don't try to nickel and dime you with dlc you just get the dlc in the base package after you beat the game with the extra cases so love that about astral chain it is phenomenal and absolutely deserves its number four spot on the list number three the legend of zelda breath of the wild and this is the game that truly started the legend of the Nintendo Switch at this point. Without this game, it would have been tough for Nintendo to really truly sell the concept of the Nintendo Switch without that piece of software that said, okay, this is the game that you need to be able to play anywhere that you want. This is something new for Nintendo fans to get this high quality of a Zelda game that isn't already multiple years old or a port or a remaster, but a brand new big triple A Zelda game anywhere that you want at the system's launch that is goaded and that's why breath of the wild is right up there because of its innovation and what it did it took the open world formula that we know but it turned it on its head in many different ways because of its physics and mechanics while other games are very pretty and do great things in the open world a lot of them didn't really have physics tied to all the different objects you can just run right through the grass you can't really cut the grass you can't pick up different objects you can't do different things breath of the wild challenged all of those conventions and said no you can climb here you can go there you can pick that up you can move that over there you can solve puzzles in a variety of different ways it's not just going to be a set canned way of doing things so to me that really opened up my eyes to wow they really did something special here. This game is incredible. And honestly, Breath of the Wild, when it comes to the music, when it comes to the graphics, when it comes to everything, it's still one of the best on the platform. So The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild makes the number three on the list. Next up at number two, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 plus Future Redeemed. And man, this was tough for the top three here. But let me give you the reason why I have Xenoblade Chronicles 3 plus Future Redeemed a bit above all of these other games. To me, it's the pinnacle and the ending of one of the greatest, if not the greatest, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, the greatest trilogy of games story-wise that I have ever played, even better than Mass Effect. And you guys know how much I love Mass Effect because unlike 
EA, Nintendo and Microsoft did not fumble the third game when it comes to the ending and what they did. Future Redeemed and Zipline Chronicles 3, there's still questions. There's still questions and we did get the art book and everything, but by the time that I finished playing this tandem of games, I felt that this was easily the best trilogy. How they took multiple different games across multiple generations and tied them almost seamlessly together, weave them in and out over the course of thousands of years and the revelations that we hear about is just too powerful. It's too good. And the gameplay is the best that it's been in the series. It looks better than the other games. It runs better than the other games. It's got a lot of great quality of life features that were not included in Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition or Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They brought some of them back even from Xenoblade Chronicles X. So I loved that they did this. The map features that we had to wait for in Xenoblade 2 or just didn't have in Xenoblade Definitive Edition are there all stock and standard. They didn't really do many updates for patches to fix things or anything like that. It was pretty much complete. You can just play it through. They had a season pass thing that added some great content as well, but the future redeemed is really where I say, okay, the gameplay took the next step. Future redeems combat was so fun. It was bliss to play through. I savored every bit of it because I knew that the game wasn't too long, but every bit of it was no filler. It felt good to play through. It felt good to do the side quests. Having Shulk and Rex and the story and who they are and who they're with in their party and intertwine that and to beat that game just felt magical and special. Like there was nothing else on the market like it. I don't really think there is if you look at Zinomate Chronicles and what it did. So with the gameplay improvements, with the story wrapping up and how it did, it just makes Xenoblade a special experience and I had to put it at number two on the list. And coming in at number one, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. We have to have this game at number one, at least in my opinion. And I'm gonna give you guys a number of reasons why. This is by far the craziest game on the platform. What you can do is literally limitless and endless. It almost feels like Nintendo's version of Zelda Minecraft. Now that might not be for everyone, but I found myself spending so much time just doing crazy things in the game with the physics, fusing all different types of weapons, trying out different things, beating enemies in different ways, making all sorts of different types of hovercrafts and water boats and exploring. And yes, it's the map from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but there's so many new areas to go through and ways to explore and sky areas to go to. And the shrines are like 10 times better when it comes to what the shrines are and where you encounter them and how you find them and what you do in them. I had so much fun playing through the different shrines in the game. They're not all winners, but they were definitely more percentage of winners than what we got with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And the combat controls gameplay all performed great for the most part. A few dips here and there with the game, the ultra hand mechanic, but overall it ran pretty good, better than what Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild ran at. So I was very impressed with just everything in the game. The fact that the game didn't have any glitches, bugs, problems, like there was very few reported. And for the most part, I didn't run into anything. I don't recall any times that the game froze or glitched or anything like that. And that's somewhat, I wanna say common or normal, but you will definitely see that in open world games, especially ones that have crazy physics. I mean, we see what happens in Bethesda's games a lot, but Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom never buckled, never had a problem. They really optimized the heck out of this game to get it running as good as it does on the Nintendo Switch. And combine that with the story that I felt was definitely good, not necessarily the greatest thing ever, but to me in that world, it felt organic, it felt good to play through, and the ending was so satisfying in terms of the final boss battle and seeing the past and everything. So to me, the layout, the gameplay, the controls, the side quests, everything in Tears of the Kingdom was just special. So it makes it the number one on my list. But all right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the top 15 best single player games on the Nintendo Switch. What are some of your favorite games? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you are someone new, click that notification bell, and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.